friends, this is Miss Starbuck. I teach at Beulah Rao Elementary School, and I am here today with my good friend, Kyle Fister. And I want to tell you all that I met Kyle when we were in college. Actually, our college was a special college that was just for art. It was called the Rhode Island School of Design in Rhode Island. And Kyle and I met because we had a lot of classes together our first year of college. Now, Kyle is here today because he is an architect and he's gonna talk to us a little bit about what it's like to be an architect. And he's gonna show us a little bit about how he does that work. How did you know you wanted to be an architect? Uh, well, it, it took a while for me to realize it. Um, when I was very young, I, I loved to draw um, and I, I did it constantly. And I like to draw houses. And I think for me as a being, as a really young person, I love to just invent worlds. And so I would draw houses with like floors made out of trampolines that look like castles, things like that. And, awesome. um, but I think that I start, you know, the reason I went to RISD was at that time in my life, I ultimately kind of wanted to be an artist. Um, um, and one of the reasons was when I was young, uh, I thought that to be an architect, you had to be great at math and uh, extremely organized and extremely precise. And, you know, when I was young, I had a hard time reading and I've never been very good at math. So I think for a long time, I thought that I just wasn't capable of doing it. And it wasn't until I was at RISD and I realized um, that actually I had a lot of the skills that you needed to be an architect. Now, Kyle, I think that my artists and all of the artists that are in um, Columbia, Missouri, my fourth and fifth graders, would love to see um, some of the tools that you use to do your job. So would you be able to show uh, my students a little bit about um, the kinds of supplies you use and then possibly even some of your drawings? That would be really sure. special for us. Sure. I, I, I do sit at my computer uh, for most of the day. And so I have my mouse and my keyboard, but you know, I also have my sketchbook and my ruler and my uh, straight edge and my scale. So I will often sort of work uh, on a three-dimensional model in the computer and then I'll make a, make a printout, you know, wow. that's a progress. And then, you know, utilize, utilizing like trace paper or something, um, I will then sort of like work by hand to, you know, develop specific areas, you know, like in this case, this is a rendering of, of a railing and using that underlay of the model, I can sort of, you know, work out the detail of how this thing actually goes together. And then what's really important in my job is not only like figuring it out, but then communicating it to people. I think that is so cool too, that you, as you're in your work as an architect, you do some digital work and then, but it's also still important for you to be able to draw with your own hands too. I think that's neat that you do both types of work. Very much so. Would you mind showing us a few pages from your sketchbook? Yeah, sure. So this is, this is a sketchbook that I kind of is dedicated to uh, one project that I'm working on right now. But so this also shows another thing that I do when I'm working, which is that ah. we look at many versions of something. Oh, so they cool. kind of the additional sketch in this case is the floor plan. And then you have an alternative idea. So you, you lay down a piece of trace, you sketch the options, and then maybe that gives you a further idea or you want to look at it from, instead of looking at it from an overhead view, you want to now look at it from a sideways view. So then you get that. So the sketchbook sort of builds up a set of ideas and then you're going to have sort of, so this is like a perspective sketch by hand. Um, awesome. So you can you imagine what the space looks like? You, you sort of take parts of the building, separate them from the rest of it, work on them. Because a building is a big, complicated thing. Yeah. We, we have to break it apart. We have to look at, we have to look at individual pieces. Again, looking at different options. That's great. Um, diagramming different possibilities, occasionally daydreaming about other things. I love it. Now, okay, here's a question. A lot of my artists 
feel that when you are a professional artist or an architect, it means that you no longer make mistakes or mess up, which we know is not true, but we can, will you be another person who, who says that you make a lot of mistakes? <laughs> um, you, you are not, you are never judged by your mistakes. You are only ever judged by how you react to them. And Love every that. one of your, every one of the mistakes I've made in my career and in my art, um, they've all been incredible learning opportunities. That that's at this point in my life, I almost look forward to when I've made a big mistake because I know that that means I'm about to get better. I, I love I'm, that. I love that. We're gonna print that <laughs> out, and I'm gonna put it on the wall of my classroom. The next time I make my uh, my my next mistake means I'm about to get better. I love it. Um, I know that you have um, a digital drawing that you can show us. Is is this? Sure. Tell us about this digital drawing. Is this this is your current project you're working on right now? Yeah. So um, the, I have a most of what I do now is actually designing really large houses. Uh, and so this house that I'm going to show you is under construction right now, um, and we've designed it mostly using uh, three dimensional modeling software called Rhinoceros. So I'm cool. going to show you the the Rhino model. Okay. Wow. So this this is a sort of messy view, but you can see um, the street down below. Here we have, we have the car on the street. You enter you enter the house in a kind of subterranean garage, uh, and then you either take the elevator up to the main level or you can take this staircase that cantilevers off the hillside. Wow. And brings you up to the entrance where we have, in some way, it's, it's not unlike a castle. There's a little bit of a moat. This is a, a water feature. So you kind of enter the house floating on these sort of stone lily pads on a pond. And then that brings you into the living room. And wow. So then we can go inside. Um, and so, you know, using this model, we, we plan the furniture, the architecture. Um, we think a lot about how the sun will interact with the space. So this, this room faces west. And because we're up on a hill, we get a lot of sunlight. So this living room space is protected by a, a set of um, shades. That are on the outside of the building. Awesome. That is super cool. Um, you can see in here we have a kind of game room. Wow. Uh, so a bar, uh, another kitchen outdoors. So th this is a this is quite a quite an extravagant house. So Kyle, is this something that you designed by yourself or did you design it? I know that you work together with a friend of yours. Did you both design this or was this something that yeah. you thought of? A project a project of this size uh, involved many, many people. And okay. an architect, um, even even as, as the architect, I collaborate with folks that, um, that I work with, but a house like this also involves structural engineers. Yeah. Involves landscape designers. It involves a whole host of consultants and everyone contributes. Yeah, that's such an interesting part. Well, thank you for doing that screen share. Um, that is super special that we got a chance to see what it looks like when you're kind of at the final stages of a project. That is awesome. And, um, let's let's wrap up with maybe one final question. How about if you could tell my young artists one thing about being an architect? What what do you think that you would like them? to know about it. That, I know that, and that's kind of a hard question, but but thing. yeah, if there's something that just kind of pops into your mind or something you wish you knew as a as a young artist who, who was interested in architecture. Yeah, I think, um, you know, like I said earlier, thinking that you're disqualified from doing something because you're not good at this or you're not good at that, or you don't think that, that you have, you know, certain abilities, I think, you, I think if you are passionate about it and it interests you and you think that it's something that can maintain your interest over the course of your life, then you're going to be fine. 
Well, my friends, this is so special that we got a chance to talk to somebody who is in the field, who does architecture now. And um, I think we can thank Kyle later on by, uh, I, I can send some examples of the artwork that you all have made um, to kind of show him what we've made it in response to learning about his uh, experience with architecture. So Kyle, thank you so much for joining us today. And I know that my students are going to love it more than you know. Uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you for letting me talk. <laughs>